Awesome. Good morning, everybody. All right, and welcome back to the hangar, everybody. Sorry for the noise, but what we got going on today is I got the uh, the air pack, or I'm sorry, the high pack warming up. That jack back there underneath the uh, the right wing, the, since the strut collapsed, we can't get the jack underneath it. So what we're going to use is hit that strut with a little air pressure, get get that uh, build that uh, get the strut pressurized and lift that wing up so we can get the jack underneath. So got this warming up. We're just going to hit it with air. We're not going to use we're not going to waste any nitrogen since that strut's coming off anyway. So uh, let's see what we got. Let's let's get this. Uh, Get this jack up there. All three jacks are up and aligned so now all we got to do is start pumping and lift the jet so I'm gonna set you guys down and set you guys up for a nice little montage Good to be able to walk underneath there again. We're gonna need an 11 16 socket and breaker bar. Nice. All right. Gotta now we're working in. on. Uh, now we got to take off the right main wheel, so we got to unbolt it and get all the brake stacks off, and then pull the wheel. Fun. We're getting there. Got your project to here, Jamie. What you got? I learned something. This must be slightly rounded out because the 11 16 is slipping around. I need. I guess maybe a, a six point. Oh, a six point socket? Yeah, 11 sixteenths. Six point eleven sixteenths? Mm -hmm. Alrighty, we'll go, we'll go find you one. Call me gopher today. Alright. 
brake stack is out. You guys can see that back there on the cart. And now we're just taking the uh, wheel bolts out and pull the wheel off. Yep, then pull the wheel off. When I was, when I was younger, the way I could get them on is you get down on your knees and you kind of get the tire off, it off on your knees. knees. You just yeah. kind of like yeah. roll it up in there. Come off a lot easier than they go on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got that gravity component helping you out. Sweet. We got to get that brake housing off. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So now there is going to be a ton of fun. Oh yeah, because uh, that axle good. nut has 5,000 inch pounds of torque on it. That's all you have to have the tank bar. Good grief! Wow, 5,000 inch pounds. I can take that tank bar, and me and a buddy would go back here, and get it to a certain torque, you know, and then we'd put the torque wrench on it, which wasn't going to give you near enough leverage. And he's like, click, click, okay, you know. <laughs> I was going to have a zero torque wrench that goes up that high. Well, well you divide it by foot pounds, so yeah. 12. <laughs> Whatever 5,000 divided by well, 12 is. Who wants to try to get the cotter pins out of that nut? Not it. <laughs> Where in, uh, is it inside here? Mm hmm. Uh, we just we'll need to pass that to that. Right, let me you, get it, you do it from the outside or just you gotta go roll this out of the way? Gotta go through there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't see anything. Well, last light time. And while y'all do that, all right, so down in that little dark hole, that's the axle nut. That's what holds on the entire assembly right there. And that's what Al was referring to, that's uh, torqued to like 5,000 inch pounds. So we got two pins that we got to pull out of it first, and then we can uh, get a big giant socket in there and unscrew that. And then we take some of these brake lines off on the front side, and then this whole hub will come off, and then, uh, and then yeah, then we can start looking at it and then look at our uh, spare gear and make sure everything matches and then it opens us up for unassembling everything up here to get this entire strut assembly off and replace it. Learned anything here? I don't know, but new technique. Half hour later, we got the first pin out. Man, what a pain in the butt that is. But we'll get her. Now we gotta get the second one out. How many pins are there? There's two. Two cotter pins. But they're on the inside of a nut that's inside of that. Okay, <laughs> I think what we need to do is try to straighten the legs out like we did before. Get, ready? get in a little bit and then go at it like we did. Yeah, ready? Let's see how long this one takes us. <laughs> start, your, start your clock. All right, so that second cotter pit is kicking our butt, so we're going to take a breather from this and we're going to go head off to lunch. It's a stainless steel cotter pit inside of a very hard to access spot, and yeah, we'll get there. All right, guys, so here's what the struts look like when they're fully extended. This is what do they look like anytime the gear is down and the aircraft is either on jacks like it is now or up in the air with the gear down. And especially like say the nose gear the nose gear comes down pretty far but here's the mains now part of this is the strut also acts as a shock absorber for the landing so and it's the, the inside of this is divided into two chambers you got the lower and the upper now the upper chamber is only pressurized it's it does not take a lot of pressure to pressurize the upper chamber i think somewhere on the order of about 40 psi i'd have to look at the crew chief book but the lower strut gets charged to somewhere around 1800. And again, I'm just uh, recalling numbers that Crew Chief Al has mentioned. But um, what we think was happening over here on the right main, and like you guys saw in the previous week, the, um, the strut has leaked down and collapsed. And that's because it lost all of its air pressure. What we think was happening last year was uh, the strut seals inside, the lower chamber leaked into the upper chamber, pretty much overpressured the upper. And part of the gear sequence is this guy back here, this, this little rod. So on a gear retraction, obviously with the struts extended, they don't fit up in the gear wells like, they, like you see above me there. 
So part of the retraction sequence is this little guy that we call the shrink link. And what that does is it, as the gear comes up, like as the gear swings up, this shrink link retracts and it, um, it pulls the entire gear all the way up. So it basically it compresses the strut as the gear swings in. And then once, once this guy uh, comes up high enough up into the uplock assembly, it hits the switch in the cycle switch here and it allows this door to close. What was happening to us last year was the gear would make it all the way up and it looks like it was nestled in here, but it wasn't going up all the way and this door wouldn't shut. So piecing it together, now knowing that there's a, a strut seal leak, and when we did test the pressure, because here's the servicing port for that upper chamber is right here. And the, the one down here for the lower chamber. Uh, when we put the gauge on it, that, that gauge was pegged. And there is a uh, quick check gauge right, right up here as well. So what we're thinking was happening was it just wasn't, it, it wasn't retracting up all the way so it could make it up into the gear bay properly. So... That's what we think was going on with the gear. And that's just a quick rundown on how the gear works. And got a bit there. But um, yeah, so that's a quick rundown on how the gear works. And it's the exact opposite whenever the gear goes down. So uh, the door, uh, as soon as the pilot puts the gear handle down, these doors pop open. Uh, and then the reverse sequence, the gear, gear swings out and then the struts extend and then they get uh, down and locked. And I don't recall where that switch is offhand. And then they would get the indicators up in the cockpit that all three gears are down and locked. So that's just a quick rundown of what we got going on. All right, in other Phantom news, we picked up a few volunteers from the air show. So we're happy that we got a few extra volunteers. You've probably seen a couple of guys sitting in the background that probably have never been on the channel before. So we're grateful we got some more volunteers to help out with this. Uh, in addition, uh, Diesel Thunder Jr. number three has wanted to join in with the fun and festivities as well. So here he is, folks. It's the last one we have left at home. But he's eager, will, uh, he's eager and willing to learn, so happy to have him here as well. Also, on the DCS side of things, uh, last Sunday, Heatbler, who's developing the F4 Echo model, uh, put out an amazing video. Uh, if you're not, if you haven't seen it yet, check it out. If you're not into PC flight simulation, Highly recommend you watch that video because they did an outstanding job on it, preserving the legacy of the Phantom, and man, what amount of detail that they put into it. So, like I said, even if you're not into PC flight simulation, go check that video out because they, man, that was an epic video. All right, everybody, that's all I got for this week. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.